This is a dark beam branded UV flashlight. It also has some regular lights on it. The box says model B203. I was sent this to review for free. If you wanted to purchase it, it would cost you about $18. Alright, so in the box we have the flashlight itself, a charging cable, which is USB-A to USB-C, and a small manual. And I've turned it on by pushing the button when I was taking it out of the box. So, it has three different buttons on it. There is a floodlight button here, which has white light there, or red light. So this would be useful for astronomy if you need a red light camera for astronomy. There's an icon on the back that looks like a magnet, so it is magnetically attachable to things that are metal. Now my refrigerator is not the strongest piece of metal, and so the fact that this light will stick to it and hold its own weight up without dropping means that that magnet is sufficiently strong to stick this to just about any piece of metal. So the clothes dryer here, you know, that's a, a pretty solid piece of sheet metal, and it sticks to that quite well as well. There are four blue dots here from the factory. I'm assuming that is essentially the battery charging level. Push it again, you get emergency flashing. Push it again, it turns off. Now on the back, they have a sticker that says COB light, LED light, type C, power bank. There is a little rubber thing here which has a USB-C port and a USB-A port, so it kind of has power bank functionality, although with such a small device I don't think you're going to get a whole bunch of charge out of it, but in an emergency it might power your phone for a little bit of time. Um, so the rubber thing here basically has a tab which fits into the USB-A slot, and that's the primary thing that holds it in place there. Now there's two lights buttons on the side for lights, and there's two different uh, single LEDs in there, and one of these is 365 nanometers, and the other one is 395 nanometers. Um, so the 395 nanometers is more visible to the human eye, and the 365 you can kind of see with human eye, but not as much. And so they're both UVA, and as long as you're wearing um, UV protected eyeglasses or sunglasses or anything like that, they're not really dangerous to you. But it is recommended you wear eye protection if you're curing resin or something like that. Now, if you're just shining this away from you at night, it's not really going to be an issue for the reflected light coming back to you. So the manual doesn't actually say which button is which, but the listing on the website has a picture that shows the power looking button here with that light on the bottom is the 395. It's kind of more bluish, purplish. And then the three line button here with the light on the top that looks a little more whitish is the 365. Let's go try these guys out. All right, I have some fluorescent paint on a card here and this here is the 395 so you can see there's the paint fluorescing and it stays fluorescent a little bit afterwards and here is the 365 and so the paint appears to fluoresce a little more under the 365 in my eyes it charges up maybe just slightly more under the 365. I think personally I'd probably just use both of these lights. Um, so the 365 is dimmer to the human eye so you can see that the beam it throws is smaller. The 395 has this bigger beam and so you can see that beam with the human eye a lot more. I think this dimmer beam makes the fluorescence show up a little brighter. Um, so you can play back and forth with the two of them and decide what you, you know, which one works best for whatever your particular application is. So I have some cloth here that is mostly 95% bamboo fibers, but it has 5% spandex, and so you can see the spandex fibers fluorescing there. This is, they're fluorescing quite blue underneath a um, 365 nanometer light. Now when I turn on the 395 nanometer light, you can see the camera picks up that light and your eye picks up that light a lot more. And I can still see the fluorescent spots, but they're not as distinct. I think they're throwing off the same amount of light, it's just that there's a lot of other light that the eye can see. So it looks to me like the 65 nanometer is much more useful when you're checking for things fluorescing um, and you don't care to see with your your eye non fluorescent objects 
and they specifically recommend the 395 light for curing UV resins. It has a USB-C charging port, but I want to know, will it charge off of a USB-C power delivery charger, or does it require just a USB-A to C cable? And with a lot of these inexpensive flashlight type things, even though it has a USB-C port, it will not power negotiate and will not charge from a USB-C charger. So you need to be using the provided cable or a cable that is plugged into a USB-A port at the other end, just so that it has five volts on it. Um, and so when we plug in just a, a cable that goes to a USB-A port, then it'll provide the five volts and this guy will start charging up. Now the manual said two amps at five volts. This guy's almost fully charged and it's drawing 0.825 amps. Um, and you can see here we have three of the lights solid and one is flashing. So I'm gonna charge this guy fully up. Then we'll do a runtime test. Um, we'll also give a shot of the USB-A port here and see how much current it can provide. I'm not expecting this little flashlight to do much as a power bank, but they have included the feature, so I'm gonna test it. Okay, this guy has four solid lights. The amp draw is zero, so it has been fully charged. We are going to try out the USB-A emergency power port feature on this tiny little flashlight. So it is generating 5 volts, and I'm going to start this off at 0.2 amps. Alright, so 5 volts. At a quarter amp, no problem, it'll generate that. Let's go up to half an amp. All right, so we're still at five volts. Half an amp, no problems. All right, five volts and one amp. So it's actually um, pushing an amp at five volts, so that's a good five watts charging on this guy. Let's... Uh, Oh, and it turned off. Um, so it looks like one amp is about what you're gonna get out of this guy. And I don't know how long it'll do that. It probably has a pretty small battery inside there. But it can maintain one amp and the voltage sag is not bad at all. So it's 4.93 volts at one amp. So if you needed to charge your phone, you could draw an amp out of this guy for a while and it would give you a little bit of a charge. I'm not gonna test it to see how much of a charge. Um, I'm gonna charge it back up and then we're gonna do a runtime test. All right, this guy's fully charged. We are now gonna go do a runtime test. I'm going to run this guy and see how long the 365 nanometer light will run. Um, it was fully charged. I turned it on at 9.43 p.m. I have the time-lapse camera running, and we will see how long this goes. All right, that light definitely turned out sometime overnight. I'll hit the button again. It did turn back on when I hit the button, but we are at the last little dot here. So it got so low it turned off. Um, it's essentially empty. Um, I'm going to let it run down until it turns off a second time to make sure it's definitely empty. So looking at the time lapse, this guy had about three hours of a strong beam, and then it started visibly getting weaker, um, and probably over the next hour it dimmed down to pretty much a non-usable state. Um, so I'm going to say you have about a three hour of usable runtime with a single UV light running. Now, the super white light here might take up more power than that, so you might get less time on the super white light, or if you had both UV lights, I'd expect you to have less time. Um, but, you know, this is not necessarily a flashlight you're going to be leaving out as a lantern. It's something you shine on things to see them or to detect something, um, and then you probably turn off again. So I think three hours of usable total light time is pretty reasonable for something this sized. All right, this guy is well and truly discharged. The last little light is flashing blue. The flashlight here is basically so dim you can barely see it turn on there. All right, this guy is drawing 0.7 amps. It's charging basically three and a half watts, and we are keeping a running total of how many watt hours or milliamp hours it takes to charge up. All right, this guy is fully charged. It is drawing zero amps, and to get it to that point, it imported 1,077 milliamp hours, or 5 watt hours. 
I'm going to say that the battery inside of here is probably an 800 milliamp hour battery. Um, you know, somewhere in the kind of four to four and a half watt hour capacity. All right, so I'm pretty impressed with this little guy. You know, it's a small flashlight. It only has about three hours of runtime on, on the UV mode that I tested, um, but it has a lot of flexibility. So as an astronomer, I really like the um, ability to have the red light. So, you know, there's the white light, and then there's just the solid red light. So that's really nice. The only downside here is you do have to cycle through the bright white light to get to that red light. So I, I kind of wish they had four buttons, one that was just dedicated to just the red light because I have to go through the flashing mode to get it off and then I have to go through the bright mode to get it on. Um, so other than that little knit I have, you know, it's nice that it has a white kind of lantern mode as well as the red light mode in addition to the UV light. Um, it has the emergency USB-A charging port just as you know an added feature it's nice to have it's better to have it than not have it um, and you know pretty nice small form factor easily handheld easily stored I like the fact that there's the magnet on the bottom you can stick it up to things and have it stay where you put it um, so you know it's a relatively good deal I think at this price point